Yellowstone. Its dreamlike natural beauty may sometime in the future turn into a nightmare. With little warning, the gigantic volcano could awaken and explode, putting the entire planet at risk. Unlike most disasters, such as tornadoes or hurricanes, which are short-lived and localized, a volcanic super eruption in Yellowstone would have global effects for years. Its impact would be on the scale of an asteroid, large enough to change the way we view our history. For a long time, Earth history was uh, gradual changes, slow changes over long periods of time. And now we realize that every once in a while, boom, out of the sky comes something catastrophic. Most scientists believe an asteroid caused the disappearance of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. But new discoveries suggest volcanoes can cause planet-wide devastation as well. One of the early volcanoes fueled by the Yellowstone hotspot left a gruesome graveyard a thousand miles downwind. 12 million years ago, the wildlife in Nebraska was similar to what we have in Africa today. We have elephants, rhinoceroses, camels, horses related to zebras, all kinds of critters that, that aren't here anymore. Their bones, discovered in northern Nebraska, tell a distressing story of Yellowstone's impact. They were found buried under several feet of ash, volcanic debris linked to a super eruption. We first thought that maybe all these critters had been buried alive in ash, like the people at Pompeii. But the more closely we looked at the fossils, it uh, turns out that that wasn't true. Most of the fossil bones exhibited evidence of a strange illness, a clue to why so many animals died. It has the extra growth of bone uh, on the leg bones and on the jaws. The unusual bone growth is a signature symptom of Marie's disease, a rare lung condition resulting from breathing large amounts of dust or ash. Well, this is a jawbone of a camel from the ash bed. This shiny bone here is, uh, is healthy. It's normal fossilized bone. And you can see where the healthy bone stops and this new growth begins. You can see the color changes and the texture changes. It looks like a sponge. And this is the diagnostic feature of HPOD or Marie's disease. Voorhees believes that ash from the Yellowstone hotspot caused Marie's disease in these animals. Ash is, is nothing but very small pieces of glass. That's how you can tell volcanic ash from other types of fine powdery rocks, is that uh, volcanic ash uh, sparkles because it's made out of little teeny pieces of glass. During a super eruption, the tremendous pressures cause the molten rock to explode. It turns the rock into tiny pieces of glass, which drift with the wind and land hundreds of miles away. Just as soon as the volcanic ash fell, the whole landscape for thousands of square miles was covered with this very fine powder. And every step that those animals took, they would raise a cloud of ash. And uh, they just kept breathing it day after day after day. So what we think happened to the animals is that they uh, breathed this material night and day until their lungs just gradually gave out. Most of the animals on the Nebraska Plains suffocated on the ash within a week of the eruption. This from a supervolcano a thousand miles away. Volcanoes can kill at a distance. I, I really wouldn't have bet 20 years ago that a volcano a thousand miles away could actually cause mass death, but uh, ashfall has made a believer of me. More recently, the 1815 eruption of the Indonesian island of Tambora proved ash could kill indirectly through dramatic climate change. 50 times larger than Mount St. Helens, the impact of the Tambora volcano was overwhelming. The eruption reduced the mountain by 4,000 feet as nearly 150 million tons of ash and debris were ejected into the air. The ash cloud could be seen for hundreds of miles. The cloud went over India, darkened the sky, and caused the temperature to go down. The temperatures went below freezing. 
It took almost a year for the ash to spread across the rest of the globe. But when it did, the results were staggering. A New England newspaper from 1816 published this account. Snow and hail began to fall about 10 o'clock a.m., and the storm continued till evening, accompanied by a brisk wind. This was June 15th. There was, uh, in some places, essentially no summer. In, in the eastern United States, there was snow and ice in June, July, August. They replanted the crops. The crops died. They replanted them again. The unusually frigid weather reached Europe, some 9,000 miles from Tambora, throwing life there into chaos. 1816 was the last time there was widespread starvation in Europe. That's never happened since. And it's almost certainly involved with the eruption of Tambora. And the Tambora eruption doesn't begin to match the fury of a Yellowstone super eruption. The Tambora eruption is on the order of 50 to 100 times smaller than, than these large sort of super volcano eruptions out of Yellowstone. Even smaller than Tambora was the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, which devoured villages out to 200 miles. Yet despite its modest size, Pinatubo altered the global climate for years and has been linked to the destructive hurricanes Andrew and Iniki. After the eruption of Pinatubo, there was a definitely measurable change in the, in the global temperature as a result of that eruption. It was on the order of two degrees uh, for the year following the eruption. It may sound trivial, but a two degree change in global temperature over a long time could create unusually severe storms and kill off all but the hardiest plant life. Pinatubo was a hundred times smaller than the last Yellowstone super eruption and had cataclysmic effects across the globe. Imagine what Yellowstone would do. In recent geological history, only the colossal eruption of Toba on the island of Sumatra can match the size of Yellowstone. And that eruption some 70,000 years ago may have nearly destroyed the human race. Well, Toba is the largest supervolcano that we know about. There's now a large lake called Lake Toba which is the hole out of which the, the eruption came. It likely erupted for two weeks, dropping ash six inches deep on the subcontinent of India. But Toba's greatest impact was felt halfway across the planet in Africa. Around the time of the Toba eruption, it's thought the population of early man was catastrophically reduced. It appears a bottleneck or a contraction of the human population occurred, reducing our numbers from possibly hundreds of thousands to just a few thousand. We know from the genetic data that something happened in the human history, in the history of our species, that reduced the amount of genetic variation a lot. And the argument is all about what was the nature of that event. One possibility is that there's some catastrophe that happened 70,000 years ago like the Toba supervolcano that just wipes out plants and animals and humans all over the earth until there's hardly any of them left. The massive eruption of Toba, more than 25 times larger than Tambora, likely created a catastrophic change in climate. Ice core samples suggest that the average temperature may have dipped as much as 20 degrees for 